What's going on, quitters? It's another episode of Don't Quit Your Day Job. You know me, I'm your host, comedian Max Mal, and today is June 18th, 2022. I've been biking every day for like two weeks, and my quads are getting jacked, okay? We're having a cool big quad summer out here in Brooklyn. Uh, this Today, you guys, we have a very special returning guest. Uh, please give it up for amazing comedian and now SNL writer, Vanessa Jackson. Woot, woot. Thanks Thank for coming you. on. I'm glad you had to have you back. Yeah, I'm stoked to be back. This might be my only podcast I've ever returned to. I oh, love really? it. Yeah. <laughs> you were like for the listeners, obviously, you're returning because we record a podcast and then probably like a month or two later <laughs> you got on SNL. Yeah, <laughs> I, like, I oh, think shit. so. That's what I can't remember when it was because this year's been a blur, but you're right. And it was like immediately <laughs> after. I was like, wait to sign the contract until I've done Maxim's podcast. You yeah. put it out, and there then boom. <laughs> <laughs> so when you listeners after this one go back listen to your old one and be like you've changed Vanessa I know I'll have to go back and listen to my old one I should have done that before I came I'm like what if I lie (laughs) I've completely forgotten what we talked about except that you uh started comedy by trying to be a red carpet interviewer yes uh uh-huh and then the way everybody starts comedy very typical yeah (laughs) the usual so I mean you are probably uh my first comedy friend to get something like big so congratulations thank you I do what I can you know I really try (laughs) out here it was well deserved it's well deserved (laughs) uh so let me ask you this to start off when did you did you always want have you always wanted to do snl or is this kind of something that you were just kind of applying for as like yeah i mean yes and yes and no i feel like snl is like the huge thing that everybody wants to do or Mm -hmm. would do i know everybody always talks about like i don't know or whatever but it's like if you got offered it of course you would do it so it's one of those things that was in the back of my mind i think i had applied they do like blind submissions every year. And I think I had, this was like my third time submitting a mm. packet, um, just blind. So yeah, it was always one of those, but also by the third time and because it's blind submissions and sometimes you just never hear back. It's one of those things where you're like, okay, I'm going to put all my hard work into it and then send it off and forget about it and <laughs> yeah. like go about my life. So yeah. it was one of those things where, yeah, I wanted it for sure. But um I wasn't necessarily like the person who was like, I'm the poster child of SNL. Right, right. Yeah. So you you said this is your third and you just blind submitted. So after two years where you're just kind of like, I'm just going to do this just in case and it yeah. probably won't yeah. come around. Or? Yeah, that's always been my advice in general. And the thing that approach I've always taken is like just everything that comes your way, you should submit to it because it's always like you never know. You know yeah. what I mean? It's always if you want to do something just it's good experience either mm-hmm. way. Every year you kind of get stronger at like writing sketches and that kind of a thing. But yeah, every packet or stuff that came my way, I would always just submit to sports shows, things I don't <laughs> have talent in. I'm like, cool. Hell yeah. Yeah. That's sick. You could be on the USA World Cup soccer team. <laughs> yes, exactly. I'm like, why not? Just random stuff. That's cool though. What was it? So what was the, what was it, obviously, what was it like to hear back from them? How long did it take and what, what was that like? I submitted in July mm-hmm. and didn't hear back until September. Okay. So by the time it came across, like, my email, I had forgotten. That's like, what, five months later? Three, July, three or four. Three or four? Okay. Three. July. Yeah. yeah. Cool. I don't know time. <laughs> Great. Thank you for correcting me. That's like three. I was like, is that like seven years later? That was like a decade, right? Um, it's three months. But I feel like after you submit it for the first couple of weeks, you're like waiting to hear. Um, and then you're like, okay, as it gets closer to like mm-hmm. the show's about to launch or whatever, I hadn't heard anything. So yeah, that was like three months. And then just got an email that was like SNL interview. And I was like, oh, okay, Whoa. cool. What? <laughs> All right. I'm here. I know, heart beating. I was like, am I getting catfished? what's going on that would be the (laughs) best way to catfish me because i thought it would be like some sort of like cloaked call in the night or something and i was like Mm. just an email okay fascinating (laughs) then you open it and it's like indeed.com apply yes exactly (laughs) i was like am i gonna click a link and then all of a sudden my whole phone's gonna explode and people are like you should have known i'm like i should have i should have so what was the what was the follow-up interview to submitting your blind packet yeah, so they emailed and asked to do like an interview the next week. And the interview process, at least for writers, is um, a bit different. It was like there was a bunch of us kind of there to interview, and they brought us into like two separate rooms, one with like 
writer, head writers, and then one with like producers, and um, pretty much just like asked us a bunch of questions. I mean, I've always been told it was like late night interviews, especially too, is like once they kind of asked to interview, they've seen like your work and gone over all your stuff. And right. those are pretty much just to make sure you're not like a psychopath and right. <laughs> not like a, gonna be insane or it like attack sense. anyone. Yeah. It's, so it's pretty chill. It's more about like culture fit at that point. Yes, yeah. exactly. But in my head, I'm also just trying to figure out what they're trying to figure out. I'm like, right. everything feels like a trick. So they're like, okay. where'd you grow up? And I'm like, where did you want me to grow up? <laughs> you know, like every question I'm just trying to suss out. I'm like, is this really what you're trying to mm -hmm. say? And they're like, you do stand up i'm like yeah unless you don't want me to and then maybe i don't and i don't know <laughs> depends on the day yeah. um so yeah no it was very very chill but then it's also harder to read because you're like did i answer correct mm. <laughs> did they like me i don't know so yeah. is it kind of like where the questions kind of like broad like comedy career vibes yeah okay. it's just like what who inspires you who do you like it's comedy wise mm. like what's your taste or that kind of a thing you should have been um, like listen i already did a podcast I know. <laughs> don't quit your day job I answer all these yes things. i already answered all of it <laughs> i do it's always hard the hardest question for me is like who's your favorite stand-ups because my mind immediately i'll have like people who i love and then i'm like wait but what are what are the things that i should say like wait let me mm. throw a couple women and then a couple people and it's just like so funny <laughs> what's I, your what's your unfiltered favorite stand-ups answer my, uh, my unfiltered favorite stand i would say honestly john mulaney as he is in sorry were like the two who got me really hooked on like mm. stand up. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. But my filtered version would be then go. also Wanda. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I do love Wanda Sykes. She's awesome. Nice. That's, I mean, that's, uh, I feel like that's a <laughs> kind of a funny thing to trip up on instead of being like, earnestly, who are your favorites? But I gotta throw. <laughs> I know. It's like such like cancel culture too now because I'm like, can I say they're my favorites? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's honestly, it's better than asking like corporate interview questions. At least they weren't like, name a comedy challenge in a time yes. you overcame. <laughs> <laughs> that is very, very true. 100%. I remember I one time, one before when I was doing entertainment journalism, I interviewed at Entertainment Tonight, and the last question of the interview was, who is your favorite Kardashian? <laughs> and I was like, Chloe. <laughs> and they were like, oh, cool. We just asked that because sometimes people are like, we hate the Kardashians, and that's like our number one brand. And I was right. like, oh, God, that's a good trick question, yeah. too. Because I imagine there's a lot of people who are like, Ugh. <laughs> and they're like, I guess you can work here. <laughs> That's fine. I'm guessing your favorite Kardashian has changed now. <laughs> it, no, it's still, I still think Chloe is the people's Kardashian. Yeah. I'll give it to her. You know, she, she struggles a little bit, but still got to love her. Shout out to Chloe. I'm sure she's a big listener. What big if she listener. was? You Dude, never if I know. get a Chloe bump on this podcast, Rock. I'd be set for life. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, <Deal>. Vanessa. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. So you go in for the, the, you get the, you submit the blind packet. You go in for the blind interview, where it's just kind of, or not a blind, regular interview, where yeah. it's kind of chill, kind of see if you fit. What happens after that? After is the panic. Uh, <laughs> no, I, it was a weird, because I think there was like two weeks before I knew like the first episode of the season was October 2nd. And it was like, I think I interviewed on like a Tuesday and then by the following Tuesday I hadn't heard back. And then by that following Tuesday I hadn't heard back. And I knew that the show was supposed to start like they would have had to hire you on by Mondays when you would have had to start writing because the following Saturday was right, the show. Right. So at that point I was like, cool, didn't get it. Right. Uh, but then Thursday I got an email that was like, here is your offer packet. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. Also, which I now know because I'm not very attuned to how this industry works because I mm -hmm. didn't have agents or reps or anything. Right. They're the ones who are supposed to call you and be like, oh my gosh, you got offered this job. So <laughs> I just straight up got, which also happened when I got hired for a little late with Lily Singh. I just got an email with like my offer packet and I was like, nope, Nobody told me that I got it, but, <laughs> but I guess I did because this is the contract. Mm. But um, yeah, I think they're supposed to do that and be like, congrats, girly, you're a star. And I just <laughs> didn't get it. I just got an email on a Thursday on my phone and I was like, <gasps> luckily I was in my apartment or I would have probably had a panic attack like in a Starbucks or something. <laughs> <laughs> but I did like scream a little bit and throw my phone. And I was yeah. like, great. That's amazing. Yeah. Hell yeah. So if you had if you had had representation, would you have gotten the news earlier? Uh, no, everybody found out that day. Actually, I found out after talking to the writer. So we all were like very last minute. Mm. I think they just would have been it would have been disseminated in a more like congratulatory. Oh, my yeah. gosh, it's amazing. Instead, yeah. it was like from the legal department. Um, but no, yeah, everyone found out mm -hmm. kind of uh, last minute. So we were all like, which is good for me because I was in New York. But there was a lot of people who moved from like 
Los Angeles mm-hmm. and they had like literally four days. Like they found out on Thursday, had to be there on Monday, <laughs> which is insane. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So luckily I was just in New York and unemployed and living my best life. Yeah. Uh, so that was good at least. Jeez. I mean, that's so, I, I feel like even for regular jobs, I'd be so stressed out if they're like, you're, you start in four days. Like, yes. Whoa. Yeah. You're like, what do you do? I know. But I also said, I kind of liked it that way because it was a lot more like, I think if you had given me too much time, I would have gotten too type A about it and too like, Mm. okay, and like stressed about it. Well, four days, you're just like, all right, but we'll see. This will be, (laughs) it's just throwing you in. Um, And I also was like focused on, I had to cancel like a lot of shows and stuff and be Mm. like, but like under cloak of darkness and be like, hey, I cannot make it. I'm starting a new job, which sounds so like, (laughs) okay, weirdo. (laughs) Yeah, right. Over the weekend. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. Like, great all right <laughs> good uh yeah I would have told him straight up. I got a new job. It starts with an S, ends with an L, and uh, you're going to book me again. <laughs> and don't worry. I'll be on your show. No, I wish I was that person. I always, like, if ever I have to, like, drop out or something, I panic. I'm like, I'm so sorry. I'm the worst person ever. Yeah. I got offered a Saturday 4.30 p.m. show next month, uh-huh. and I was like, the the person who offered it to me, I just met them in the show. Very nice. Yeah. And I was like, I was like, oh, amazing. Then I realized that I'm celebrating Lee's birthday that day. Uh, yeah. And I was like, I have to turn. I f- I'm like sad because I have to turn down <laughs> a show that is not even happened because my girlfriend's birthday is that yeah. day. I'm like, what is this? <laughs> Comedy is such. I always talk about it. it's like such Stockholm syndrome because you get so used to like not getting spots, not getting booked, not getting shows, and then you start to, and then something will happen or something, or you like mm. have like a family trip or something, and you're like, dang it, like I yeah. I needed to do this ten minutes. <laughs> instead of go celebrate my best friend's like 25th birthday or something right so, that's insane that's the saddest part is i will have so many like conflicts of like oh no should i cancel it or should i try to make this like 10 minute thing in the middle yeah. <laughs> like, go to the bathroom and then run to the show it's yeah. crazy i'm at the point with my show where it's like if a comedian has <clears throat> if my show starts at nine and a comedian's like i'm doing a spot at eight and i'm doing a spot at 10 i'm like don't come. <laughs> You're not <laughs> going to make it. <laughs> well, sometimes you, it's, it's some, I've had nights where it's like, it has to be a perfect storm. Like yeah. <laughs> that's the stressful part too, is if you're doing like different spots, you're like, okay, if this show puts me up first and then this one starts just a little behind and they put me up third and then this show puts me up last, maybe it's so yeah, bad. Right. Just shoot the gap. <laughs> yeah. I've had moments like that where I'm like, I should cancel, but instead I'm just DMing them like, Hey, could I go? second to last but no later than 8 45 but i might make it there at 8 20 <laughs> and they're like please just stop yeah <laughs> I'm like, cool. so you're canceling shows that weekend did you have a celebration of sorts before you started on monday i did actually i i perform i do a lot at like greenwich village comedy club mm-hmm. and so a bunch of people from there we like got brunch and stuff and just kind of celebrated like nice. this is so exciting yeah but awesome. like four days is not a lot of time to, no. <laughs> to be like let's do a fully formed like right. party and yeah it's barely time to process yeah exactly truly. so what is uh so you start what is day one like what are you like what were your what were you most nervous about for day one you know what is crazy and i don't know if this is just because like the stress and the excitement i don't fully remember like details of day one yeah. isn't that crazy <laughs> i was trying to think about yeah. this lately because you would think that it would be like seared into your brain mm. but i almost feel like it's like just like the stress and overrolling of doing something so amazing. I remember it being so like shockingly normal as like mm. a job in a yeah. sense. And where it's, I don't know what I expected if it was going to be like Bill Murray greeting me at the door, but <laughs> it was very like a lot of like emails for like, here's how you set up your computers and this is the IT right. guy and he's going to come help you with this. And like, how do you use the printers and uh, <laughs> just like things like that. The thing that I do love about SNL though, is they very much just like throw you in to the right. writing part. Essentially. Okay. There's not really a lot of like, okay, so here's like the training and stuff. It's like you kind of learn as you go, okay. which is also helpful for me too, because it's like, it really is a job that you have to learn by experience. So it almost right. would be pointless if they sat you down for like, five hours or whatever and was like this is this this it's kind of just like as we go you'll pick it up and you'll Mm -hmm. figure it out and yeah which is kind of cool nice so you go in day one it's just normal job logistical nonsense yeah i was sharing an office with um a woman named tesha Kondrat who came from like la and she's written for a lot of shows like archer robot chicken Mm -hmm. um and so it was really fun to be i think they hired on 10 new writers when i started and me and her were the only women who they hired on and then we shared an office which was great because Mm -hmm. we were just like okay cool we're like war buddies now yeah (laughs) um but yeah it was very much like i think was the first 
th- that was our first official day. Oh, now I remember why I don't remember. Okay. okay. Our first first day was on Zoom. Okay. So we just were like meeting each other. And then our official day in the office was Tuesday, which was our writing day. Mm. So that day is just, you're just writing. Gotcha. Yeah. So you arrive to the office and you're like, okay, here's the script format. Go right ahead. And you're like, cool. This will be great. So f- as for, so <laughs> that, um, I'm like, I have anxiety thinking about that. So you go into writing right away, okay? Yes. Are, do you, before this, had you had some sketch ideas in your like backlog that you wanted to like maybe write about or were you just coming in blank with other people figuring it out? Yes and no. I think the best part about the job and why it's it's a little bit easier on like a week to week basis is you have to write specifically for who's hosting. Okay. So like you can have ideas that you would like to use for like people who come and like obviously ideas where you're like, oh, this would be a funny sketch idea. And if somebody who's like hosting ever comes and is like, oh great, then you can put it there. But it's hard to necessarily have ideas like a ton a ton, at least for me. I don't right. know about other people. Um work because it was it's so and they will tell us like who the hosts are and so maybe you'll be start thinking like a couple weeks mm. in advance like oh maybe this would be good for this person or that would be good for that person but it's a lot more like you're writing towards their voice and then also right. the cast but like how can i center a sketch that like i couldn't write a same sketch for owen wilson that i could write for like willem dafoe mm. <laughs> you know what i mean yeah, like they exactly. have two very different like <laughs> voices and skill sets um so yeah so that kind of helps make it fresh each week mm-hmm. which i like so your your first week you're going in who was who was hosting the first week owen wilson owen will okay well yeah. owen. nice <laughs> i know i know he's the one i think because it was my first week that i will never forget <laughs> right yeah definitely yeah so When you were writing your first week, are you guys like, how does the writing kind of work? Are you writing alone for a certain amount of time and then you come together? Or is it just like all kind of whatever you want it to be? It's whatever you want it to be, but it's like highly encouraged that you write with other people Mm -hmm. just because there's like also so so few slots to get on the show, you know? Right, right. That they're very much like, yeah, Mm. write with other people so that you have more opportunities to get more sketches on. That makes sense. But the part that, yeah, that I really like is it's like so creative. Like you Mm. get a chance to write whatever you want. I know a lot of people think that you have like directives or like they're like, okay, you have to write about these five things or we make it's really just like you're running it by your bosses to make sure that nobody else has like covered the same thing or it's something that they would like not completely do. But it's it's more of just like a this is my ideas for the week. And they're like, cool, go write it. You know, mm. there's not a whole lot of like red tape in that sense. Right. Yeah. OK, that's cool. So in the first week, are you joining forces with the other new writers and just kind of? Yeah, I think the first week I wrote with Tesha and then I might have written with Alex English, who I ended up writing a lot with. And mm-hmm. he's so great. He's such a funny stand up, too. Um, so, yeah, I uh, over the course, I never was one of those people who like found a writing partner there, yeah. but I was writing with a bunch of different people. Um, and yeah, everyone was so really great honestly Mm -hmm. but yeah that that is it's also nerve-wracking because it's like your first week and you don't know any people and you have to like should would we write well together maybe let's try and just pitch jokes and a bunch of sketches but everyone was so nice yeah that's the part that was good i came on with like such a great group Mm -hmm. of writers who were just so nice you were also if i remember correctly this was like the largest writer hiring wave in like years for SNL, yeah, right? Yeah, uh-huh. I think since like the 80s or something. Yeah. yeah. So you start with a bunch of new people. Yes, a ton of them. That's kind of cool, though, because then you have people kind of at your level who are just as nervous about yeah, it as you. Yeah, I think that's what made it, because I had heard over the years it's like competitive or cutthroat or whatever. I mm. think that's what made it not so much that way this right. year. It was like there were so many of us who are new who all just wanted to like get our voices out there that it was mm. like, okay, cool. If you want to write, uh, we'll do this. And there was not none of that really like, yeah, people boxing each other out. Yeah. We were all so new and trying to figure out how mm. to do it. I also cool. like that with like what you said earlier about like them encouraging you to write together. So you get, you have more of a chance of getting something you made on the show. Yes. It's like, of course that makes sense. Like if you're all writing your own thing, then you have like, what? yeah, there's, it'd be an insane amount. It'd be like um, 30 sketches you have to review and like five of them are going to make it. I don't yes. know. I don't know how many people work there and I don't know <laughs> how many sketches. It's are on a, a typical show. Yeah. It's a lot. Um, a sketch. I think there's like seven or eight sketches on a typical show, but mm. I think like 40 that are submitted and read every week. Okay. And so they have to narrow it down. So it's just as like, yeah it's a lot better it's rare that you'll see like a sketch with just one person's name right yeah what was your what was the first what was what'd you write the first week for owen wilson oh it was not good (laughs) i i wrote one that was like oh what was it it was he it wasn't good i don't (laughs) did it end up getting i don't i think they did no did they not read it 
I don't remember if they read it. I don't think they did because I think I would have cried. Um, it was like <laughs> he was a bank robber for like robbing a bank, but he was like really needy and was just like, I feel like you guys are talking about him behind my back. And it was just so <laughs> weird. <laughs> it was it's a like, funny premise. <laughs> thank you. It's a funny idea. Somebody can take that and run with it. It did not work well for me. Yeah. Um, I also was just, I, they, I it took me a while to figure out what my writing process was because okay. I'm very much like fresh in the morning. I write the best in the morning and there we start writing at like 8 9 p.m. What? and uh yeah and write through the night. So I never left earlier than like 4:35 a.m. So it took I think that first week I started like my first sketch at like 11 p.m. and I quickly was like my brain is not firing right now. Jesus Christ. Yeah, and we so, got a question from our producer yeah. Connor Kafechain, SNL fan. Love it. Yeah, I'm making sure oh we're recording here perfectly fine. <laughs> yeah. Uh the is it SNL is famous for the infamous uh working hours. It sounds yeah. like that's true. Can you kind of talk about like is it Everything that we read in the books about, you know, <laughs> all nighters and then just like stress of pitching it and like, do you have to go to bat for your shows? I guess, can you walk me through a week and what it feels like to yeah. have a sketch selected? Yes. I, cause I did not realize that a lot of people, there's like half and half. Like a lot of people know how intense the hours are and a lot of people don't know. And so it's funny cause during the season, people would try to like, meet up with me for coffee or something mm -hmm. and I'd or like drinks and I'd be like, I'm sorry, I'm working tonight. And they'd be like, oh, it's fine. We can meet up at like 9, 10. And I'm like, can you do 3 a.m.? Um, <laughs> it's like the hours are insane. Um, but like, it's fun because while you're there, it's like great. So basically how it works is like every season, they'll be like, we're three weeks on writing and then we have two weeks off and then like mm. three weeks on and then like three weeks off or something. So that helps with like doing spots and like exhaustion and stuff. But basically like Monday, we're kind of like pitching and thinking of ideas. <clears throat> Tuesday is our big writing day. So we get in the office like maybe 12 in the afternoon, one in the afternoon. And we're talking to people about what ideas we want to do, what ideas we don't want to do. Um, and then we like meet with Lauren, uh, and the host that afternoon and like we'll pitch just like one liner jokes to people which we didn't do that season this season because of covid they wanted to like eliminate the hours we were in there so basically that was just like a meeting for us to like meet the host and meet lauren and him just be like go out there and write good stuff mm -hmm. and then tuesday nights <clears throat> is really like the bulk of the writing night so tuesday nights is when we like i said we'll start writing it probably i mean we get there at like 12 in the afternoon but a lot of that is spent like talking to people about ideas and like being like, Hey, do you want to write this with me? And then like pitching jokes and doing beats and things. And so the writing doesn't really start until like eight, 9 PM. And, um, you're like, again, you're maybe you wrote a draft and then you had to send it off to somebody and then somebody else sent you a draft for a different sketch you're writing. And so then you have to pitch that up and then maybe you're waiting for somebody else to meet for. So it's like, you're doing your whole normal work day, but within the hours of like 9 PM and 6 AM. Um, and a lot of people will just like sleep there overnight. I never did. Cause I was like, I need to just like go home <laughs> and get like four hours. But then a lot of times you have to still wait four up. hours. <laughs> It was insane because a lot of times you have to like get up in the morning because they're due the next day by like 10 a.m. So like I would go home at like 4 a.m. and then sleep for like three hours and get up at like eight to like get on Zoom with people and pitch jokes and make sure Whoa. that it was like perfect. Yeah. And then send it. And then you can kind of sleep. I never really went back to sleep just because like once you're up, it's like you're up. Yeah. So then, yeah, you go back and we have table read at like three in the afternoon ish and just read down all the sketches it's usually like 35 40 um for like eight hours uh there's like a break in between so there's like two halves um we're just reading everything that you wrote and then uh, yeah so then they like after that they pick what's going to be on the show and so then that it takes we're usually there till like 12 a.m ish um, this is on wednesday or on wednesday okay. yeah and then after that because writers also produce so you have to go like talk to the props department and hair and makeup and all of that and like tell them how which i like a lot too because mm -hmm. you're you get to see it through to the final end of it um and then uh thursdays we're doing like blocking and then punching up all the scripts so you can be there any we usually start at like 12 and you can be there anytime from like 12 to like 8, 9 p.m., 10 p.m. usually. Um, and then after that, on Fridays, it's a lot of blocking too. So the schedule kind of is 
it depends on like when your sketch is blocking. Mm-hmm. Your sketch could block at 10 p.m. Maybe it's at three in the afternoon, depending on how many sketches you have in the show. Um, and then Saturdays, yeah, we're there from like 12 to like four or five a.m. So the schedule is like very insane. When I was doing it, I was only able because I do stand up. I was only able to do it like Mondays and Tuesday or Mondays and Sundays. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I would just do it on my off weeks. But yeah. Wow. I know. It is insane because that was also hard. And I always felt like a jerk because people would like book me for stand up spots. And I'm like, I can do it in like three weeks. Because I, when I first got mm-hmm. there too, I attempted to like try and do it during the week, which is just so difficult. I'm also not past at a lot of clubs right now that have like late, late shows during right, the week. Right. Like I know like the seller just shows up until like 2 a.m. or whatever. Mm-hmm. So that would be easier. But um, yeah, it was just very hard. There would be a couple of times where I like try to do it on like, a, I'm like, I could make that show on Friday at eight. And then I would be like, I'm sorry, I cannot make that <sighs> show. Um, so yeah, it was hard. Or people would try to book me. I'm like, can I do it in four weeks? From now? <laughs> like, is that possible? That's, um, I am so shocked at just how much time, like I was like, you were like, oh yeah, we work late. You yeah. Know? I was like, okay. So yeah, like three, 3 PM, to like 3 AM. That's not terrible but you're also trying to submit things in the morning you know? yes so it's like a during these writing weeks it's almost like a 24-hour job for like five days yeah it's it's there will be some times where you like i literally will be sitting in the office like i feel like i didn't leave <laughs> <I'm> like <laughs> what's happening i it's funny my first week because i thought like oh a stand up you stay up late you're like used to being exhausted and like my first week i got dropped off at greenwich village mm-hmm. um because i do spots there on mcdougal i'm off mcdougal all stand up sorry you're off mcdougal like all the time and I got dropped off by my Uber at Washington Square Park and I got lost trying to figure out where and I had to literally Google Maps it because my brain was just like so exhausted I was like I literally was like I've never been this exhausted where I was like where am I I literally was like I'm here all the time like yeah Washington Square Park is like you know I literally my brain was like I don't know where I'm at it was so <laughs> weird it was very trippy oh my god so how long yeah. did it take you to kind of adjust to this sleep schedule I think maybe once I just accepted that I'll have to take a little bit of time off stand up and like just really mm-hmm. focus on like this job and I think your your body eventually gets used to it. My my the time of day is all still off. <laughs> like <laughs> like literally, I'll be like, "Good morning," and people will be like, "It's two in the afternoon." And I'll be like, "Oh, okay, cool." Because a lot of times you're also going to work at like three. I remember one time right. I was passing a Chipotle and I was like like walking to work and I was like, "Why is everyone at Chipotle in the morning?" And then I looked at my <laughs> clock and it was like two thirty, and I was like, "Oh yeah, my bad." Like, Whoa. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. <laughs> so my rhythms were all sorts of off, but then it's like you get a ton of time off in between so right. then you kind of catch up on sleep and you're finally functioning mm-hmm. and then you're like okay back to it but it is fun that's the thing that i think mm-hmm. when people hear the long hours they're like insanely long hours but they're also just like it's really fun you know right right like there's when you're there you're like you're pitching jokes and you're talking to other people and you're like producing stuff so it is like fun but it is a lot of you're just like oh yeah i feel there have been moments where i'm like i feel like i, I live here <laughs> what's <laughs> happening yeah <laughs> That's wild because it's like, but it's also like, I'm sure that you reflect on like, this is something that like less than 1% of comedians actually get to experience, yes, you know? exactly. So it's probably like a combination, like I'm exhausted and this is amazing. Yes, yeah. it's it's 100% both of that yeah. where you're like, I'm so tired, but also this is incredible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you, so you do, you said you do like three weeks on, two weeks off uh-huh. and then it, it does it always stay like that or does, are the time lengths variable? The time lengths vary. Okay. I think during like Christmas is when usually we get like two week breaks. There's like a few three week breaks in mm-hmm. there, but usually it was like two weeks off. Yeah. Okay. So your first, your first two week break, uh-huh. how, what did you do to like unwind from your first three weeks of? Oh, I think I just straight up slept and then also did like spots and stuff um, mm-hmm. that I had like booked out <laughs> where I was like, I can't do your show this week. Can I do it three weeks from now? Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I genuinely just slept. A lot of people were like, Oh, I'm going to go to vacation or I'm going to go or let a lot of like cast and writers, live in LA so they like go back there I just was like I'm sleeping here really <laughs> yeah whoa that seems like a I know a which pain. is <laughs> I didn't think about until I was like because I always had thought to myself why don't I see the like SNL cast around more often mm-hmm. but I think because a lot of them live in LA yeah so are for the cast members are they only there towards the end of the week then no I think that's the cool part about this place is like it's very much like I always feel bad because I feel like the cast members don't get as much credit for like a lot of them are fully like writing. I mean, all of them have to, I think, write. I don't know what their 
directive is, but I think at least two things a week. So they're writing with us. Mm. So uh, it's very much, which I think a lot of people don't realize it's very collaborative. We all like have each other's numbers and we're supposed to like text people for ideas and be like, Hey, I am writing this piece for you. Would you want to help me write it? And they're like, yeah, I'll hop on this with you. Or like mm -hmm. writers will reach out to you to do things. Ego Nuotum reached out to me a lot. She was really, really great and really kind, punky. Um, Johnson was also the same. She was always like reaching out for, to me for things to like help her with stuff too. Um, so yeah, it's very much like a very collaborative. I think a lot of times people think the cast are like, and then they just show up on their white horses. And like, <laughs> I think also like, a lot of the cast that you see on the show a mm -hmm. lot is because they're really, really strong writers and write a lot of their own uh, material uh, mm. that they also like partner with writers for. But I think if you're a cast member and like you really know your voice and are also a really strong writer, it's just like works out so well for you. Right. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. It's like, it's very encouraging to hear as yeah. well. Cause it's like, Oh, they're not just cast. They're also writers. It's yes. so cool. I, I like thought that. that too. When I first started, I think that's what I also thought. I thought like, Oh, and then they're like separate or whatever, but they have like offices around us. Like we're all mm -hmm. kind of pairing together and working together towards the same thing too. Mm -hmm. And they also want you to write them in stuff, which right. is a fascinating too. They want you're... the show to be good. Yes. Crazy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, 100%. They want, it's one of those things where they want you to be like, Oh, do you have something for me or a new character? They're mm. always like super happy. Like I've never reached out to someone and been like, I have this idea. And they're like, not funny. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> they're always like, I would love to be in your idea. Thank you so much. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. That's awesome. And then like, that creates such a welcoming environment, especially for like being yeah. new on the team. You oh, one hundred percent, and it does. It's from like I think the top down too. I remember I had to text Keenan uh, for an idea that I had towards the end of the season, and I was like, "Oh, he's not gonna respond." I was like, "He's like the coolest person ever," and he was like so great, and he like responded the day when I was like, "This is funny," and gave me like some extra ideas to mm. go along with it, and like punched it up and was like very like oh yeah and i'll read it and let me know and did like a second pass on mm -hmm. it so yeah they're all really hands-on i mm -hmm. don't think there's anyone who's able to just be like no i'm too big for it. you know <laughs> they're all like still really passionate about it and working towards it which is cool that's dope yeah. has uh has this changed how you write your comedy now in your downtime uh it, or do you just not write comedy <laughs> i just yeah i just don't do any comedy no it does and it doesn't i think also because i don't write comedy yeah <laughs> i don't write okay but you don't no you do you I write put, a lot i put in my phone and i shit around on stage oh uh, no i figure it out really yeah. i feel like you write a lot i feel like you always have like new stuff yeah because i hate everything i make okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're like because i hate my set yeah. totality um, i haven't figured out my voice <laughs> yes exactly. so i'm still working on it yeah i think it it has inspired me also in my stand-up too where like I think a lot of times when you're doing the sketch writing and I love sketch writing I love being in a writer's room but mm -hmm. it's also it's a different process because it's like okay you have to kind of be like okay be collaborative whereas stand up I think is a lot more like like I don't really write sketch in my spare time now unless I'm like being paid for it I'm right, just like right, right. yeah I'm so I but for stand up it makes me more like oh what's an idea that I like want to do or like what's yeah it helps mm -hmm. me like or I'll think of something and I'm like maybe that didn't work for that but that could be work for like a bit in my stand up kind right, of thing. right yeah that makes sense you have like another medium to like express those things yes it's like, exactly and it's all you which yeah. is like so fun at the end of the day it's all you and it's you tinkering tinkering with it based on like oh this is working for the audience mm -hmm. or it's not you know yeah so, I mean, with writing a sketch show, like, I mean, you basically have to have that validation from all the other writers before you bring it to the audience because you don't want to bomb for the audience yeah. first time. Uh -huh. So that's kind of cool, though. I like that, like, collaborative vibe. Because I think in stand-up, like, we're so non-collaborative about our bits. Yes. Like, there's <clears throat> every time someone tells me, a joke and i'm like oh they, they hit, i have a really good tag idea for them it uh -huh. has to be like one of my close comedy friends yes. <laughs> like can i give you a tag yes <laughs> can i please do this for you oh um, <laughs> it's so true with stand up is such like a it is it's so it's weird in my head sometimes because it's such a like collaborative in a sense or not even collaborative but it's like a team thing where you feel like we're all on the same team but then it is so individualized we're like Sometimes people, and sometimes people will give you great tags, but you're like, that's just not my voice, you right, know? Right, 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 yeah. I used to get that a lot when I first started, especially because people were like, 
oh, you'll be so much funny when you're edgier. <laughs> I'm like, that's <laughs> not at all what I am not or what I'm going to do. Yeah. yeah, I'm like, that's not. <laughs> thank you so much for that. Yeah. But uh, not me. Uh, so, yeah, it just kind of depends. But I've done that, too. I Yeah, I it's always funny because sometimes you'll get, like, tags and stuff on, like, things that were already working. And I'm yeah. like, I think that just person just wanted to be in on, like, a bit that was good <laughs> and, <laughs> and be able to tell people, like, you know, I created that for them. Yeah, right. Um, but, yeah, that is an <laughs> awkward that you have to – it is weird that you kind of have to, like, trust someone or feel like – because otherwise it does feel kind of offensive when you're like, mm. oh, let me let me give it. But I always like tags, especially from a, if it's from like a really like um, Matthew Broussard. Okay, I've done yeah. a few shows with him and he is one of those. He's just like a comics comic, I feel like. And he like pays attention and will like listen to your set and mm. before I'll go on stage. He'll be like, oh, I have a tag for this if you want it or whatever. And he's given me a couple that have like worked really, really well. Um, so That's yeah, dope. yeah. So I'm always I'm always up to listen to tags mm. or whatever because I think at the end of the day you just don't have to use them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Although I did once do somebody somebody gave me a tag for something, and then booked me on their show like a month later and was like, I hope that tag has been working out. And I was like, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like contemplating. I was like, Should I do it with their tag on the show even though I didn't like it? Oh. But I I didn't, and then I just didn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what an awkward foot to book oh, someone no. on. And I hope you're really killing it with my. I was like, oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> it was so bad. Are you ever find yourself in the situation where you're just like hanging out and you end up joking about someone with some comics and you're all silent for a second and someone goes, can I take that? Yeah. <laughs> I love that. That's always the fun part. I, I guess. You yes. Can have that. Yeah. You can have it. I love that when it's with comics. It's always mm. funny. And you guys have probably experienced when it's like somebody who doesn't do comedy and they say something that just is like a sentence and they're like, don't use that. And one of your things, and you're like, don't use what? <laughs> I don't know where you thought the joke was. Yeah. I'm always like, I won't. Yeah. <laughs> always... Don't insert white noise into my joke. Yeah, I don't like just exactly. static. Yeah, TV exactly. Static. Yeah. Like I, I trust me. I will not. I yeah. will not use that. <laughs> or all. the flip side is the people who are so unaware that they're being written into a joke. Yes. In the moment. <laughs> it's always. I always see that people always who I've never used for anything are always like, don't use that. But then people who I'm like, oh, you're a wealth of jokes. <laughs> it's like, they're never aware. They're like, that's funny. Who is that about? You're like, I don't know. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so weird. So with that, on the flip side, so writing something like Sketch and SNL, you actually when you have like conversations and you riff, it's fine because you're all writing it together and yes. you're like collaborating. Yeah, That's for sure. That's like the best part is just like punching stuff up and adding jokes and pitching and mm. everyone. Yeah, nobody's ever like... Oh, you can't. Yeah, it's very, very collaborative in a good way, which is fun. So for your, I asked this kind of earlier. So once you kind of got into the rhythm of how the show and the writing works, uh -huh. what are you doing to prepare for Monday, which is pitch day or is that ideas day? Uh, Monday is kind of like starting the ideas okay. of like maybe I could reach out to this person and mm. that kind of a thing. Um, I think it's just mostly like, I don't know, sketch is an interesting thing where I try the opposite of stand-up like when i come to stand-up i'm very like meticulous about like what jokes and wording and sketch i kind of try to let it flow more from like even though stand-up comes from observing stuff but i find at least my process for sketch is like if i sit there and just beat my head against the wall and i'm like what if it was a guy who like had a tiger cage or something you know mm -hmm. like it just never works out but if i try to just like as I think of things as I go about my day and I'm like, oh, that would be good for that person. Or like, mm -hmm. I really try to pull my ideas from who the host is too. Right, right. So I'm like, oh, Kim Kardashian might try to do like this or this might be fun to see her in like this kind of a situation or a scenario. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how I try to draw my ideas from is a little mm -hmm. bit less like intense mm, okay yeah. gotcha gotcha so yeah. it's kind of just like a natural kind of keep it in mind as you yes go your day. like for instance uh, the sketch that i did this year that did the best was i did this like uh amazon go commercial parody incredible Thank that you. one was so funny i, I really appreciate yeah. that but that really came from um there's an amazon amazon go store in 30 rock Okay. that I had been to and I was talking to Brian Tucker who wrote it with me. Um, he had gone to the Amazon Go store too and we were both like, isn't this so weird? And so I was like, do you want to just write something about it? And he was like, yeah, let's do it. And we wanted to put like a race element in it. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and so that one was like the simplest. We like mm -hmm. did that on like a Monday and we're pretty much finished with it by Tuesday. And we're yeah. like, okay, this is great. That's good to go. Um, so yeah, a lot of times it just comes from me trying to like stay 
in tune and remember when I say something just in real life, I think. Yeah. Scenarios that you can, that at least for me, that's, I've never really, my sketch writing isn't really like silly necessarily. Mm. I'm not like clown at a birthday party, but I am very much like, oh, my friend did this weird thing in our brunch. And mm. that would be like a fun thing to write about. Okay. It's kind of in like heightening on that mm -hmm. for me at least. That's cool. Cause that, that uh, Amazon Go sketch, like of course every comedian we know watched it. Yeah. It was just, it was one of those things where the premise was so concise and clear. And I was like, I fucking love this. So it's, uh, it's very cool that like it, you actually wrote it super fast. Yeah, you know? they, it was, it was good. And Brian Tucker is also awesome. I feel like we were a good balance too. Cause I sometimes will tend to like hit things too hard where I'm like, okay, and this joke is like this. And he was really good about also being like, I think this works too if it's like a lighter touch. So that was like one of those just perfect storms. It's kind of like the kind of like uh tuning it down, like tuning down stand up yes, in a way. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah for sure. Because you're like in stand up you're probably like, what if this punch hit insanely hard and then the joke was over? Yes. Something? Yeah. <laughs> every time, every time I try to write a bit where I'm like, okay, this is gonna murder. Yeah. I, on the way here I wrote something that I was like, I'm gonna try this tonight. We're gonna see a new bit um and watch it just bomb <laughs> it's always the worst when you feel it dying as you're saying it you're like oh the, no one's on board for this yeah that's cool yeah. that's cool i literally i did i did an open my class now you know not shows not book uh <laughs> but i did it was out of my class and i was trying a new joke and it's, it's kind of like a rough idea i've got some funny stuff for it but I was like, I went up there. I was like, oh, last week I kind of came in with a lot of energy to this mic. And it worked out because I knew what I was going to talk about. Yeah. And I was like, today I'm actually going to take it very mellow because if this bombs and I'm high energy, I'm going to hate myself. Uh, so I'm going to yeah. just take it mellow because if this doesn't work out, then I'm like, it's fine. It's yes. new. <laughs> that's what I always tell people. I feel like act out comics are made in open mics. Like that's yeah. when you figure out. And it's only because like I've tried an act out like twice and it and the the pain of going so hard at something <laughs> and having it just meet silence. You're like, oh, I can never uh, do that again. <laughs> I will never act something out in my life. <laughs> I had some dude come to one of my open mics a while back and he had like a full five minute scripted act out thing uh, that was not good. Yeah. And he was clearly a very new comedian, clearly like a previous actor because yeah. it was really over the top. Oh, no. And we all just sat there in silence for five minutes and it was like, damn, this has got to hurt. <laughs> <I> <laughs> this has got to hurt. And he's got to keep doing the act out and power oh, through it because no. that's how he wrote it. But I love that he didn't bail on it because I'm commitment. the queen of I'll bail. I'll bail in the middle. I don't care. I'll be on the ground rolling around and be like, anyway, so dating's hard, yeah, right? right. <laughs> I'm like, what? I've definitely stopped jokes at, at shows and been like, do you guys hate me? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, so you guys aren't on board with yeah, this. Yeah, you don't like that's, this at all. That's fine. We'll skip it. That's cool. So back to sketches. So you, uh, so the Amazon Go one actually made it onto the show. Yeah. Well, well did you have any other ones make it onto the show? Or? I did a lot where like I collaborated with people or I had like jokes on. Um, that was probably the biggest one. I'm trying to think. There was like an Airbnb one that I did with Rami Malek that I think maybe was cut for time. Um, oh, there was one. Whoa, what was that? It was like he and Cecily were like crazy Airbnb hosts mm. who are basically like murderers. Um, and that one was really fun. Connor has that one. To... That one made it onto YouTube. I did see that. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I'm Perfect. pretty sure. Great. Okay. <laughs> He's like, and I hated it. Um, no, 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 no. <laughs> I remember that sketch. Yeah, yeah. So okay, maybe cool. It ended up on Instagram. Yeah, I, I think it was one of those that where they were like, we'll throw it on there. Why mm. not? Why not for fun? Connor. So before this, like a couple days before, I was like, I've got Vanessa Jackson coming on on Saturday to talk about SNL. So I come with your SNL questions, and he goes, I just read the whole book about the history oh, of the show. Oh, live from New York. Yeah, I listened to the audio book uh, oh, when nice. I was driving. I love that. I need to listen to the. I I try to listen to audiobooks, and I I love paper books. I will quit an audiobook like two minutes in. I'm like, you didn't get me. It could be the best book in the world. I'm like, nah. I I found driving. It's perfect. Oh really? Like I like listening to spoken word while uh -huh. driving, like podcast or like stand up. Yes. I'll listen to more specials than watch. Oh really? Weirdly enough, yeah. Oh interesting. Okay, I'm the opposite. Weird. Love that energy for you, though. <laughs> <laughs> I actually just to kind of interject too. What does it feel like? That is it the with SNL? There's a, a lot of lore around sketches getting cut or like having to really vouch for sketches. Uh -huh. How does that like? How does that feel for you as a writer? Yeah. Uh, in that process, have you experienced that? Yeah, I mean, not really, like, fighting for sketches. I think also as a first-year writer, when it's cut, you're just like, 
okay, it's cut. <laughs> I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't think there's any there like, well, there, that might have been. Also, there's a big writing staff right now. So it's one of those things where it's just like, it's just going to, there's going to be a ton that just gets cut. Um, so there hasn't really been any of that. Like they allow you to like bring it back kind of. So like, mm. but then you also, there's like, you should wait a couple episodes to make sure. Like it's one of those things where they won't let you like have something that's read like 17 <laughs> episodes in a row where you're like, this just, <laughs> it's not working. It ain't there. Yeah. Um, but they will let you bring it back like once or maybe twice. But mm-hmm. mostly just like once because also it's like it's hard to get something that's been read back on the show because it's like everybody's heard the jokes and stuff and right. so it's like they're not laughing as hard at those kind of things um but no there hasn't been a ton of things where you're like fighting for it it also like especially as like a first year writer you're like I know that's not gonna make it because <laughs> there was not a laugh at all <laughs> not a laugh to be heard yeah uh, yeah. So did that, you have any? Did you have any bit any sketches that you wrote that you really wished would have made it further? Do you have any ideas that you were stoked on? I there was an idea that I had the the one that I had written for Keenan, which it's one of those things where sometimes when you hear something read out loud, you're like, oh, I wish I had I wish I had been able to do it this way because that probably would have been a lot funnier because um, you just hear it dying and you're like, oh, that also wasn't. That joke would have been great if <laughs> I had. It's also it's it's awkward sometimes when things bomb at like table read and stuff because it's not like we're you're in like a sketch class. It's just being written by like the other writers or whatever. It's like your stuff is being read and performed by people who are trained in this who are amazing. So if the joke didn't land, it's not them. <laughs> like <laughs> most commonly, it's not them. It's yeah. like they tried to do everything they could with that sketch. I remember <laughs> this season. I don't know who the host was, but. This makes me laugh so hard because I was laughing so hard as the sketch was bombing. I'll tell you this. Okay, what had happened was, I forget who was the host. I don't know who the host was, but it was, maybe it was Simu Leo. I want to say it was Simu Leo, where he was playing, he was doing like a rap battle with, um, he was doing a rap battle. I forget why, but it was a rap battle. And Mikey Day had also written a rap battle sketch. And for, they were the same premise. Somehow we had casted the same people. And I don't know why they let both of them be read, but <laughs> Mikey's went up first in the first half. It bombed. It bombed so hard. And Mikey is so, so funny and su- such a great writer. It was like a funny bomb where it was just like, oh, nobody's on board for this rap battle thing. And so then that was in the first half of the table read. The second half of the table read, I had to go tell Mikey like, hey, we cast you in a rap battle thing and he goes oh is it is it similar to ours and I was like you're playing the exact same character Chris Red wasn't it he's playing the exact same character he was in the last one and ours bombs so hard I was laughing so hard because it was like you could see people looking around like didn't we read this sketch it was was two versions of the exact game sketch that both just ate it and I was I was literally in tears laughing because every and it was like a 10 page sketch and everybody is just looking like no laughs it was so funny oh my god I think it was Simo Leo because I think yes because he could break dance so I think mm. we were like oh let's do a rap it was so funny bad it was like bad where it was hilarious oh and my I was god. like they even had like similar titles or I think it was, was like rap flash battle and ours was like rap battle dance or so it was so funny <laughs> so so great so when a guest comes on do they tell you what they're do they give you an overview for the staff of what they're capable yeah of? what they're capable of what they would be interested in what they want to do so you kind of have that mm. to play so with. he was like i can break dance and you guys yeah. were all and like he could battle, yes yeah he yeah. and he could break dance and i think that was also a sketch that <laughs> i don't think either of us ran it by like we were just like yeah we're gonna write <laughs> just like, <laughs> And they were both, I think, funny in the reading of them. Right. It just, yeah, on on its feet, it did not work out that well. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so I still, my friend took a picture of me. I'm just like, crying laughing. <laughs> I'm the only one laughing. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> but I was laughing because it was bombing so bad. Oh, man. <laughs> and that's a thing where it's like a heavy swing. Like we had people rapping. He's break dancing. No laughs. <laughs>, laughs. None. Well, so like the table read is like fully engaged. Like, yes. Yeah. It's the cast is because they're really trying to like sell your piece. So you're like you go to their <clears throat> like I said, you, you go to them before and you're telling them like, hey, 
we have you like for example like i told mike like we have you in this rap battle thing you're playing this this is kind of what we imagine your character mm-hmm. to be and they're like and they do their own takes on it and stuff too but then they're like oh, okay yeah i had read it and then this is what i was imagining and like this is what i wanted and you're like great run with that this is what you're supposed to run them by like if you have any complicated words so that they don't stumble over it so you're really supposed to like get them pumped and amped and then right. you also go talk to the host too and get them excited about your ideas mm-hmm. and tell them i remember that my first week that was the most nerve-wracking thing was my boss came to me like before the table read and was like, Hey, Owen Wilson's free if you want to go talk to him. And I was like, I don't need to talk to him. And he was like, No, you do to like tell him about your idea. And I was like, Oh, okay, cool, great. So you have to like go in there and be like, Here's the sketch and here's who you're playing. And like, Do you think this is funny? Um, and yeah. uh, I remember he asked me, which is so fun. He's like the most like, probably the most down to earth just normal like didn't have an entourage it was just him he was mm. like in sweats just doing his thing really good actor and he was in like sweats. yeah the yeah best of us. right just like chilling <laughs> he was like how would you like me to say this line and i was like however you would say it <laughs> I was just like, you are the great movie actor yeah. but he was like they're all everybody is that's the part that i was uh excited about and i thought was cool is like everybody's super game to mm. like try and do and make it the best that they possibly can there's mm. not a at least from my experience, not many egos or people who are like, right. I don't want to do that. Or I think it would be better this way. Everybody's just like, yeah, is this how you want it to be done? And like, so that's great. So yes, mm. they're really trying to like sell your pieces and stuff. And it's like fully, yeah, they're full. The table reads are, for the writers, it's fun because we're just sitting there watching. But for them, it's very involved and very like, uh, yeah, accents and like, yeah. Mm. So they're not just reading it. They're really trying to perform it and sell it. So hopefully it can get in the show. So when you have the hosts, right? Uh-huh. You're writing like sketches for them, and when you when you write them into a sketch, you pitch it to them as well. They and right, you kind of oh, give them an idea. Yeah, yeah. So the like the day before on our writing night, we'll have a chance to talk to them, and you can like run them by ideas in advance, especially if it's a comedian too. Right, right. And you like really want to get their take on it, yeah. and like here's what I think would be funny, and what do you have any jokes that you want to pitch, and things like that. Um, and then the table read day is the day where you like go and show them like here's the finished script and here's what mm. we came up with and here are the jokes and things like that so. so how how much of the week are they there are they there for like one night two nights three nights the host yeah yeah they're there all week really they like have to clear yeah everybody who works at that show is exhausted <laughs> that's yeah. the, which i get i a lot of people don't know you heard the whole book so you know mm. but like a lot of people don't know it's there's nobody who works there who kind of just gets to phone it in like as far as I'm concerned, everybody is like, that's also why it was hard to do spots. It's right. like your time is like, if they need you to do a sketch at 10 p.m. or they need you to be here or they need you, it's like your schedule's got to be cleared for like mm. that because it is a show that's being produced by like Saturday and it's mm. live. So like everything has to be. So yeah, the hosts are, the hosts I would say do the most hours too because they're in things. So they have yeah. to like, so being being a host on SNL is no, it's not just like here's your no. lines, have fun. It's like yeah. you're spending a whole week. It's preparing. you're spending a whole week there. You're in rehearsals. You're there all night. You're filming pre tapes. You're it's like a fully involved. Yeah, you're there for wow a week. Wow, in, uh, long hours. <laughs> I would say they have maybe the longest hours. Yeah. <laughs> Who was the host that you interfaced with the most? Um, let's see. I got to do lead on a couple different monologues, which is really cool. So I got to do lead on Selena Gomez's monologue, Mm -hmm. um, along with, uh, these guys, Mike DiCenzo and Jake Nordwin, who are like the funniest people ever. Um, and they wrote like a good chunk of the monologues this season. They let me help with like Selena Gomez. Mm. And so her mostly, cause the monologue is like one of the biggest portions of the show. So you're right. like constantly in contact with yeah. the host. Yeah. Okay. And she was like so great, which I was nervous because you never, it's like you shouldn't meet your heroes. And like any person who was on Disney channel in the early years is like going <laughs> to be, it's just going to be my hero. It's right, just a fact. Right. And she was like, so, so nice. And I was like, Oh, bless you. Love that. <laughs> yeah. Did you fangirl at all? Did you, were you like, I, I used to watch this when I was a kid. Yeah, I was like, I was a, no, I, I get into like work mode, mm. but then after I'll be like, oh my gosh, this is insane. <laughs> but like during <laughs> some, some bra- switch in your brain goes off and you're like, okay, hi, I'm Vanessa and how are you? And this is what I want. And this is blah, blah, blah. And then after you're like, this is crazy. <laughs> this is insane. That's cool. I feel like when I meet, 
the, you obviously meet a lot more celebrities and stuff uh-huh. at this point. <laughs> but whenever I meet like bigger comedians who I like uh-huh. know, like, oh, they've got a special. I actually really like their st- stuff. Yes. I just pretend like I've never heard of them. I, no, <laughs> just I, be cool. Yeah. I have the same. I have this terrible thing where I will pretend even more like I care less. I think because I'm trying so hard. Like John Mulaney hosted this mm-hmm. season and was he was one of your stand up heroes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And he like we pitched him idea and he came into our office and I was just I think I, that's probably when I was like fidgeting. I'm sure he was probably like she's got like a nervous twitch or something because I think <laughs> I was just like so the idea is and so what you're gonna do um he was really really great and he like yeah. stayed a little bit late too to be like oh so what do you you guys are new on writer because I think I was writing it with Alex English and he was like oh you guys are new writers this season how's it going for mm-hmm. you and like mm-hmm. oh I remember that and he was like really really great so that was cool too that's dope. everyone has been great mm-hmm. but I think it's also a lot of celebrities are on this show I think they're also out of their element. So they're like, we've right. never done this before. And also, you guys are the people who will make us look good. <laughs> so It's their I, first week all, every yes, time they're on it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And I think they're like, I am fully submitting to the process. Mm-hmm. So they've all been super, super great. Everybody always wants to like, who was the worst? And I'm like, as far as I was concerned, everybody was a delight. That's it's, good. Yeah, super That's nice. Awesome. Do you, did you... Do you ever work with the musical guests? How does that work? Do you ever t- hang out with them or no, talk to them? No, the musical watch? guests I never see. Okay. I don't know when they're there. The only <laughs> one that I ever saw was, I think, Jack Antonoff. And then one time I saw Halsey running by. But I don't know when they're there. I don't know where they stay. Mm. I don't know who they talk to. I literally <laughs> don't interact with the musical guests at all. Which is funny because mm. that's the p- people who I usually get hit up the most from like my friends and stuff. They're right. like, so-and-so is a musical guest. And I'm like, I will not see them. <laughs> like Maybe I'll see their head as yeah. they're doing like a, a wardrobe change. Mm. But yeah, I do not know where they go. Do you at least see them on the final performance? Like, Are you watching? Yeah, we yeah. can like go down and watch them okay. do like their music and stuff. But as far as like the behind-the-scenes action, I don't. Right. Yeah. Right. See any of them. Were there any musical guests that you like had to see this season? You um, were really into? Oh, there was one who like ended up they they went like late and they ended up doing after the show ended either a couple songs. I want to say it was Arcade Fire. Mm. I'm musical people are the ones I don't know the most. I don't mm. know why. I think I just never look up artists. <laughs> like uh, okay. if I like yeah. a song, I'm like the worst with music. I'm very into like pop culture and celebrities mm-hmm. and stuff, but music, I'm like I have no idea who that is. Gotcha. Yeah, I do not know why. Mm. But for some reason it doesn't stick in my brain. That's fine. I yeah. feel like pop stars are also so this is going to be controversial. I feel like they're really so interchangeable sometimes. That was the word that was in my brain. <laughs> yeah. So like I will get them confused. Yeah. I'm like whoever is famous now could have been Katy Perry 10 years ago. You know? Yeah. So in my brain, I just, it doesn't stick. Right. Unless it's like a, Taylor Swift was cool. Mm. She was really cool because she did her like 10 minute song and all those like fancy things. Did, um, did you yeah. get to meet her at all? No, I didn't. No, okay. But I heard she was lovely from other people. That's dope. But yeah, I did not. Which yeah. Lee's having a Taylor Swift uh, year. So. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I probably She might have been someone who I fangirled over. You know yeah. when you think you're going to be cool and then you're like, also, I love every song you've ever done. And you're like, <laughs> okay, cool. Chill out, maybe. Uh, yeah. So I'm glad I didn't meet her because that probably wouldn't have gone well yeah, for me. Yeah, the nerves would have won that one. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. So over the over the course of the season, how many, how many episodes are in the season? Oh. How, how many weeks? I think there's 21 episodes in the season. 21 weeks. Yeah. Okay. So d- as you're kind of coming down to the end of the season, right? Uh-huh. What are the, one of the, did you have things you wished you had known in the beginning when you started? Um, or was it just kind of like a natural development in the way through? I think for me specifically, I would say probably just not to let my nerves get the best of me. I think mm. there was a lot of times where I got so paralyzed because you're just thinking about how prestigious this is. Right, right. <laughs> you're just like, <laughs> this is the show that everyone loves and it's iconic and you have the opportunity to like. And I think I, I wish I had been a little bit more just like, okay, this is a job and just try to be funny and stuff. And I think I got really caught up mm. early on in like the how like important this all is yeah. and everyone's going to be watching and it, you have the opportunity to like affect the live. No, but it was, you know, <laughs> you just get so like in your head about things. And right. I think anytime you start 
writing or performing or anything for anything other than the act of it even right. in stand up like there if there's like a big comic in the room you're like oh no <laughs> like, yeah. no 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 yeah. i can't i can't that's one of the reasons i'm like i will try to get in the cellar in a couple of years when i don't think i'll have a panic attack if i see right. like chris rock in the back you know <laughs> like i think i this year has been a good test of that for me yeah. of like okay you still you need to figure out ways to like keep doing your thing when the stakes are high right. which i think is just a thing that when you're green you know yeah. you you you've never experienced certain things so you're just like so i'm i'm learning still like okay you need to be able to perform even when the pressure is like okay this is intense right. yeah exactly i'm uh my dad is coming out next weekend oh nice and it's he's gonna see me on a show small like small indie show you yeah. know but it's the first time he's gonna have seen my stand-up in almost three years yeah and i'm like i'm like i'm I am so fucking... It's literally just my dad. <laughs> it's yeah. the guy who supports me. Isn't that so weird? Like, <laughs> I was fine. When I first started, I think before I really knew that I really wanted to do this as a career, my parents would like come and I was like, I don't care, whatever. And then like I'm going back home to LA and doing a couple of shows and my mom was like, oh, we'll get the family out. And I was like, no. <laughs> no. I, don't, I don't know what it is. Your brain is just like, <laughs> now it counts and now I'm like, yeah. If there is, It's so weird. But I think that is also just a thing. Once you do, do it, not even just stand up more. I think once you for me it's like having more experiences where it's like okay mm. there are big like as i get into clubs now it's like you might be going before or after somebody who like you admire or right, like right. who is like big and being able to like do your thing and not just focus on because i've done that a couple times where you're like up there but then you're like trying to like look at the person who's like yeah. in the corner you're like okay but that's that person yeah i did a show at stand up new york a couple weeks ago with like rachel feinstein mm -hmm. um and she ended up not being there for my set and i was like good because i i was <laughs> i was being like such a at she was like leaving the club and i kept making eye contact to like say bye <laughs> so i don't think she saw me which is good but she was leaving and i kept being like hey bye no, hey, and I was like, this is so, I hope to God she did not see it. So cringy. That's so, hilarious. Yeah, I think that's a skill in and of itself is just yeah. learning how to be like, you know what? I'm going to do my thing. If they love it, great. Mm. If they don't, great. I'm still doing it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's that's like crazy. Like, I think it's wild. Cause it's like you go from being like, you know, like an open mic comedian, does indie shows and stuff yeah. to immediately being pushed into the world of like, yes. like high, like media and celebrities and yeah. being around these people. And uh -huh. like, oh my God. It's very, I think that's <laughs> the coolest and scariest part of SNL too, is everybody is like, like I said, second day on the job and they're like, go pitch Owen Wilson, your idea. You know, it's, yeah. it's very nerve wracking. <laughs> and, it, and in your brain, you're like, I'm just like a, I'm just like a person who kind of yeah. does comedy. Like, go pitch him my idea and so i think that has been very very cool to like learn mm -hmm. is like okay you gotta act like you are the thing they think you are which is a professional who's done right. this many a time because <laughs> they didn't tell them like this is their first day on the job they're just like this is a writer and they have an idea and you're like cool hey i'm vanessa how are you it does throw me off though when mm. people are really really nice like jason sudeikis was very very nice and i like went into his dressing room pitched him idea and he was like i'm so sorry i forgot to introduce myself i'm jason and i was like I i'm vanessa <laughs> i was just like so it like threw me off how nice he was and i was like oh no now i'm you threw me on my game <laughs> well he's he's like an snl alum right? yes so yeah, yeah. so i'm guessing you worked with a lot of those people who have since left the show and came back so those yeah. people would kind of probably be much more for forgiving knowing what you guys are oh, going yes, through. Oh, yes, which is, I think, why he also was like, also, hello, I'm Jason, nice to meet you, kind yeah. of a thing, yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, so it's really, really cool. <laughs> so scary, but great. So are you, do you know if you're on for the next season yet? Is that no, a thing? No, we don't find out. What if I revealed it today? So yeah. <laughs> I got Lauren on the phone. Yeah. He's going to tell, that would be a fun scoop for all of us. Call up uh, and speaker right We should have done this in July. Yeah. Damn, we'll have to do a third podcast yeah. where I'm like, okay, did I get it? Did I not? <laughs> do they keep you so on like, uh, even though the show ends, do they keep you on like a payroll until they like No, decide, I know everybody that asks work? that if we get paid for the summer. We do not. Mm. Um, which actually was one of the best advice that I got before all of this was like, they pay you a lot, but save it because there are big swaths of time where you don't have a job. <laughs> and like, right, right. Yeah. So like, just put it away, save it, that makes um, sense. which is nice. So yeah, we don't get paid for the summer. We're on like a contract basis. So hopefully I get picked up for the next season. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we don't find out, I think, until end of summer, mm -hmm. which I like. A lot of people are like, that's the worst. But for me, it's like, it's enough time removed from, I think if they told you like on your last day, that would just be like too much. The Ooh, emo emotions are too yeah. high. Like you're like, I want to return. I loved all these people. It was a great experience. So I think, I, I really hope I get a second season. But I feel like 
in the middle of summer, it'll be enough that it's like, okay, I'm removed so that in emotions aren't as intense, but mm-hmm. then also I have a lo- enough time before it comes back that it mm-hmm. wouldn't be like, okay, and now all my friends are going back to school without me, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So hopefully I do, and that mm-hmm. would be great. And then it's also like, if you do get it, it's like a pressure reliever for the rest of the summer. You're like, okay, cool. I have yeah. a job to go back to. <laughs> great. Panic is gone. Yeah. So did you uh, did you move closer? to the no uh, what no. worked out synergy or god whatever um i think is uh i had moved to the upper east side in may of mm. last year Ooh. and which worked out perfectly Perfect, yeah. because when we do have like those late nights it's like it literally an eight minute uber ride back to my place which oh, is so dope. so great before i was in washington heights right which is which is so far Oh man! So you mean when you were coming to Wobbly Ladder, Mike? You were coming from Washington Heights. I was coming from Washington Heights. That's insane! It is. It's <laughs> insane. The things I did for stand-up comedy during the pandemic. Yeah. The things I did. Okay, like, you might not think I'm funny, but I did some things. Okay, that's during like a, that. That's a. If you took the train from our yeah. place to Washington Heights. You would uh, f- not. You would finish this whole podcast yes. and still have extra time. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. I, which it, it was, but I also I loved your guys' mic during the pandemic. I think nice. a lot of people would say that too. There was certain. I was like, su- it was. I hate to say it's such a fun time because a lot of people the pandemic was not a fun time. Yeah, um, yeah. But like doing the mics and stuff because it was such a small crew of us and like yeah. So everybody was just like, I just want to do comedy. You know what I mean? And like, it was a long train ride from Washington Heights, but it's like, I had nothing else to do. So <laughs> I like, doesn't matter. Put That's on a podcast, fair. live my best life. Right. Uh, I feel yeah. like it was, it was one of those moments. I wish I had savored it more because yeah. that summer was so dope. And one thing that like does piss me off is that I feel like I got really a lot better at stand up uh-huh. once I started my two virgins weekly show. And yeah. I was like, so when we had Wobbly Ladders meeting all these new people, yeah. I kind of sucked compared to like that. <laughs> Isn't that so funny? Like, I think oh. nothing beats like those were good and like the park mics and stuff were great, but nothing beats just indoor doing comedy in places where it's supposed to be done <laughs> yeah. makes you so much because I was the same way too. But there was a lot of things that like I thought really crushed during the pandemic and then I tried them like at real shows in front and I was like oh no this was not a funny joke I remember my first show indoors I was stressed out because I didn't have anything to riff on so yeah. it was like, it's just a room. There's no helicopter. Yes, yeah. <laughs> There's no sirens. 100%. <laughs> there was like habits that I had to break after mm. where I was like, yeah, I'm sorry. Am I screaming? Because the train, I thought the train was going to go behind me. And no? <laughs> Great. Cool. Yeah. It's so tough. Yeah. It was, dude, wild. Yeah. We got one from Connor. Uh, yeah. Let's get his microphone on. That was, that was also the mark. I don't know. Are you timing up oh, there as well? Yeah, I'm timing. Oh, yeah, okay. Then you don't need me. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's kind of a two-part question. You touched upon Love a little it. bit. Um, it just like the weight of going into the building, is that palpable? And then what is, you know, there's so many stereotypes out there. And I feel like often when t- people talk about SNL, they talk about the culture that the show was founded around and not where it is now. Cause it seems like people live much more regular lives. Yeah. Um, so I guess, did you feel the weight? And then what were the things that were different than your expectations or people's expectations. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, it feels like when you walk in, there's like the a bunch of, I think I took a video of it. There's like all these uh, pictures of um, like other cast members that have been on the show. It's like in chronological order, black and white photos and photos that they took when they first started on the show. So it's not like Bill Murray now. It's like Bill Murray when he was on the show. Mm. Bill Murray was on. I'm, I'm so bad at history, but we'll pretend. <laughs> Let's say if he wasn't on it, cut it out. Uh, but uh, yeah, so it was like things like that. So like walking past and seeing like that, like the history of it or being on like the stage, um, that was crazy because you're just like, oh my gosh, these are where a lot of my favorite sketches have taken mm. place. And like you could see cool things like all the dressing rooms are the same and you're like, oh, this was so-and-so's dressing room or like this was like the – like the um please don't destroy boys are in the office of like the lonely Island where the lonely Island guys was. And that's kind of crazy and cool to think about. And um, yeah, there's a lot of people who are like when Mulaney was there, he was like, Oh, my office was like down the hall and around the corner or whatever. So that's, yeah, that's crazy. And it's really, really cool to like think about that. 
which I love. You're just working in comedy history. Yeah, like, which yeah. is crazy. So I think that also adds a lot to like the lure, the pressure of like, okay, I gotta, you know, mm -hmm. like it's <laughs> gotta be good. Um, and then wait, sorry, what was your second question? Expectations about like oh things you expected to at SNL that weren't true or vice versa. Yeah, yeah. The, the drug use wasn't true, um, which is <laughs> which is so funny because somebody did tell me that when I first started, they were like, just so you know, the schedule was created around people who were on cocaine in the 70s and nobody's on cocaine anymore, so it's just exhausting um, <laughs> and it was like very very true where I'm like oh I could see how this would be much easier with drugs uh but yeah there wasn't that so that was different where it's just like you're surviving off of like adrenaline um mm. I think the the aspect of it not being like competitive was different I was very nervous because I'm not like I can do competitive if it's like best joke wins or something but not in like a mean way and just like oh you want it to be the funniest you want it to be the greatest right. like I can do that I was very afraid that it would be like the cutthroat thing where people would be like trying to get your sketches removed or um I talked to recently there was an old SNL cast member who I had talked to who he was telling me that when he was on the show there was people like he was trying to get a writer in and then another cast member didn't want him to have that writer in because it was take stage time away from him so he purposely got his friend hired to that and it was just like I was like oh it was not like that at all when I was mm. there it was very much like we were like yeah all hands on deck like let's do let's do this and um yeah there wasn't a lot of egos which I think is what people expect the most is that it's a place where and other people's experience is different but at least for me it wasn't a place where there was like a ton of egos or at least that I felt I'm always mm -hmm. very unobservant in that way so maybe other people were like I don't know what you're talking about but for <laughs> me it was like I, it really was great I felt like everybody kind of had my back and I had everyone's back and people were trying to help me and um, I was trying to do the same for other people so that's the thing that I was not expecting is to come out of it and being like oh I really loved all these people that I work with right. and I would really be bummed if I didn't get to work with them again mm. um, which I was afraid that I would end it with like I don't know people are so mean and, <laughs> but uh, yeah it was that was the part that was unexpected that's a good question that's really cool that's like it's uh it's nice to have you come out of it and me be and tell us about this and I'm just like this just sounds great. This is yeah, I mean, it's not. I know, it sounds right? Tiring, but it sounds great. Yeah, which is so funny because you hear and I had listened to all the podcasts and you hear. I'm sure in like the books, there's stories of like I was listening to um, Dana Carvey and David Spade have a, a podcast and they were talking about um, to Bob Odenkirk and he sounds traumatized. <laughs> like he, <laughs> he hated it. Um, it was like his least favorite thing. And for me, I was just like, it's good. Um, yeah. <laughs> that I had a good experience mm. so far. So, I mean, like I said, it is really stressful. The hours are very long. You're trying to get things on. So there's a lot of like broken heart just from like, oh, I really wanted that sketch on and it didn't go, they didn't read it or like it didn't do well. It bombed and you're like, uh, no one's going to want to write with me again. So there's a lot of that and just like doubting yourself and insecurity mm. in that way. But I would say as far as like the culture there, it was great for me. That's so cool. Yeah. Did you ever have stress dreams about the job? Good question. I didn't have stress dreams. This is like one of those jobs that was lucky where I was talking about since I think I've gotten comedy jobs, I haven't like dreaded my job, mm. which is great. Like even we only got one day off a week, but I wasn't like, oh, thank God it's Sunday because I don't want to go back to work. Yeah. This is like the first job where like it's stressful again because like you want your stuff to get on, but it wasn't – I can I can do any job if the environment is not stressful. And that's probably yeah. mostly like a me thing. But like as long as like other people aren't adding to it and you're not like nervous because you have to get they really focus for all intents and purposes at SNL on the comedy of it. Like right, they right. really are like jokes, 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 and like let's make this as funny as possible. So I just would have stress, but like I was stressed before Amazon Go went on. But I think that also comes from like a stand-up mm -hmm. aspect where you're like, this isn't because somebody else told me they were like, oh, but you know, it's fine. It's like done now, so it'll go up. And I, mine is like, no, I need the laughs to be good. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. like if the laughs aren't good, I'm gonna <laughs> cry. Uh, I don't want it to just be like, oh, it's done and it's out mm -hmm. of my hands. I'm very much like I was sitting there, like because you have to like watch um, when your thing is uh, going up on dress rehearsal you sit next to Lauren and mm. then he gives you notes after it and I was just like the last better hit <laughs> <laughs> they better hit uh wow. so yeah that's 
that's it. But that's stressful. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so those kind of things were stressful, but what? not necessarily a bad stress. Mm. If that makes any sense. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the right amount. Yes. Not. What, what'd yeah. you do to like mitigate it if it got to be too much? Did you have like stuff you would do at home or during your day off that was specific to be like, I need to chill? Yeah, I think it was. And this is something when I first got there, I thought and I had asked someone, I was like, so when we have like downtime, are we supposed to be like writing sketches and like thinking of ideas and like coming up with jokes for next week or whatever? And she like literally laughed and. <laughs> Um, I was like, I don't get why she giggles so hard. And then after I realized it's like when you have downtime, take it. Yeah. And that was the thing that I did. It's like if you had like three hours before your sketch, go like shopping at H&M next door or like, you know mm. what I mean? Like because they allowed you to do that. It wasn't a job where it was like if you have downtime, you have to sit there and like be miserable and be thinking about they're like, right. OK, if you have five hours before your sketch rehearses go get coffee like nobody's gonna be like like go get like mm -hmm. on saturdays a lot of times before a dress or whatever we would have like huge chunks of time in between like punching up stuff so there it was very much like yeah do what you need to do and so i realized that is like when when you have a break take it if yeah. they're like you can go home <laughs> go home nobody's trying to trick you because i know yeah. a lot of times i've had other jobs or like office jobs where they're like if you don't have anything to do then ask us and we'll give you something and yeah. you're like yeah or they're like you're here for these hours you have to it was never like that it was like be where you need to be when you need to be there if you don't need to be there go home that's awesome yes i feel like with the intimidating like work life balance, yeah. at least they're like cool. They like recognize yes. and they're like we have Which is yeah. that also made it great. So that's why I also was never like they're like, if we don't have a meeting until four, come in at four. You know, yeah, like you yeah. don't need to be there at nine AM sitting in your office. So that I it took me a couple weeks, but because the first week, and I think that's also why I was so exhausted the first week, is I was approaching it like I have with some of my like other toxic yeah. nine, where I was getting there at 10 a.m. and then like we wouldn't go home until 3 a.m. and I would get there again at like 10 a.m. and I was yeah. just drained. And it right. was like, no, if they're saying that the meeting's not till four, there's a reason that they're saying that so that you can sleep, yeah. you know? <laughs> so it took me a while. But once I got that and managed to be like, oh, they're not trying to trick me. This yeah. isn't like a, they're trying to see who's like the least hard worker. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. no. You're fine. Yeah. Uh, geez, that's actually like really nice to hear. Yes, <laughs> that was at least great. So I'm like the like I I don't have to go. Into, I'm I'm a remote worker now. Yeah. But I remember the, the days of yore, like oh having to gosh. be there and just like just just stressing out when you got down. <laughs> yeah, I never understood why yeah. jobs were like that. If I got my work done. Then I got, does it matter if I got it done in five hours or like two? <laughs> as long as I did it and got it done. Mm. I always hated bosses where who you had to like pretend you were doing work yeah, for like yeah. four hours. You're like, why? Yeah. <laughs> this makes no sense. Oh, I also want to ask this. So what, I don't know if this is like an NDA thing. What's like the org chart like almost? Like, so you are coming on as a writer. Yeah. Is there different like tiers of writer? And do you have like a specific manager slash boss or is everyone just under Lord? <laughs> like, how does that work? Yes. There are. I don't know them. <laughs> okay, like gonna be, yeah. okay, I'll try. So there's writers, and then there's like two, th there's five head writers. Mm -hmm. And so you can approach any of them with like pitching ideas and stuff and things like that. Um, and they're really great about helping with that. And then there's like uh, executive producers or like supervising producers, and head producers. And then there's like Lauren at the top okay. of that but it's not really it's also not really i don't know it's very autonomous which is really right. just like you know what you're supposed to be doing mm -hmm. when you're supposed to be doing it so there's not a lot of like authoritarian figures if that makes sense right, like it's people right. who you like go run ideas by and who mm. can help you with things and who are obviously have been there for a while but there's no like person who's watching when okay. you get in and like yeah, making yeah. sure that you're on the clock and like yeah. checking up like micromanaging you it's very much like oh those are the people who i like approach and help me like get my ideas on yeah i started this episode like snl has got to be a crazy place crazy <laughs> stressful place to work and everything you're telling okay. me is like okay so they're like really cool here's uh, the caveat like so chill <laughs> here's the caveat that i will give you i'm a very chill person yeah i'm a very like easy to get along with it easy going and i think sometimes people think i'm like faking that but i i get it from my dad my dad has always just been very like calm down like nothing there's no <laughs> yeah. it's fine like if it's not death you're fine and mm. so for me i'm just very much like if nobody's like breathing down my shoulder and being like those are the environments i don't work well under right, right. so for me it was great i'm sure other people and again there ha there was a lot of stresses and like just like trying to get your stuff on and things like that but all in all for me i just need to be able to like operate under a mm. place where i'm like i feel like 
I was able to make a mark and was able to get my stuff done and things like that. And again, yes, I really yeah. do think that the environment was a little bit different this year because there were so many new writers mm-hmm. and whatnot. But yeah, I'm sure I will. So I'll give you that caveat yeah. that there you might have other people <laughs> on who are like, it was awful. And maybe if I don't get hired on, I'll come and be like, I'm ready to spill some tea. Um, <laughs> wouldn't that be funny? I just have like a cigarette. And I'm like, let's go. Uh, so great. No I would smoking do in the studio yeah, except I'll, for Vanessa. Okay, great. I'll do a fake. I'll fake a cigarette. I'll make, is there anything lit? I'm just like blowing blowing the air myself that would be great that would honestly be such a hilarious <laughs> don't quit your day job arc yeah, you yeah. coming on as a regular comedian coming on as an snl yes. writer coming on as a yeah gr- just like disgruntled a- upset <laughs> just on drugs that'd be so funny oh my um, gosh <laughs> yeah so yes i i thought it was great um for the that, most part that's like so so cool i i wonder if other i don't i mean you might know me you might not know i wonder if other like sketch show writer writers rooms are kind of similar approach and uh, i also wonder if uh the pandemic had anything to do with like a culture shift in that i think the pandemic did have a lot to do with it because i think they like other writers left and people weren't there as much so i feel like and also we a lot of it was over zoom and there was a lot more flexibility just as mm. far as like if people were not comfortable or comfortable coming to the office right so i think that that did help a lot with um kind of changing the culture for sure other sketch shows i don't know i just i did a little late with lily singh and that was also a super chill. It really, I think, also depends on who's leading the teams right. too. I think like our our the head writers who were at SNL this year when I was working there were just really great and more focused on like jokes and comedy mm-hmm. than like tricking you or doing yeah. you know um, <laughs> anything like that. And then at Lily Singh, it was the same. It was just she was focused on like Chelsea Davison was the head writer there, and she was just focused on like what's the funny idea, like mm-hmm. what what do you guys have? And um, yeah, there was no like gotcha aspect to it. Right, right. But I have heard that some writers' room are terrible, so I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard that some are just like awful. I should get like a disgruntled Key and Peel writer. Or something. I know, yeah, exactly. Be like, listen up. Uh, they suck. Yes, <laughs> so true. So kind of, uh, we're kind of down to the last like a little bit here. But I'm gonna ask some like little rapid fire kind of questions. Love it. Uh, which host would you want to work with again from this season? Oh, good question. Who would I want to work with again? I feel like there's one who I really love, but I'm just going to forget. Oh, Paul Rudd. Paul Rudd. Was exactly how you imagine Paul Rudd to be. It's very He cool. was incredible. He's they say don't meet your heroes, but you should everybody should meet Paul Rudd. <laughs> Everyone should. He's so funny and so naturally funny. Mm-hmm. And just immediately if you have an idea that you're kind of like, I don't know if this is funny, he'll make it funny. Mm. It's so he was so good and he's so nice and so charming. Um, he was literally sometimes you meet people you're like oh they're a little more shy than I thought they would be or so like he's exactly who you think he'd be <laughs> exactly he's the man on the TV that's <laughs> like, amazing yeah it was, so that was really really cool where I was like you are Paul Rudd cool this great good for you <laughs> I wanted to tell him good for you yeah, you know right? <laughs> way to be so cool and then uh, are there any hosts from previous seasons that you wish you could have worked with I really want to work with a like big stand up so I would love if Chris Rock was on the show mm-hmm. um, who else <clears throat> you already had John Mulaney so. I know already had John Mulaney um, who else those like, are kind of the people who I would... don't exist anymore they all got canceled i know <laughs> right they're yeah. all over they're all done go ahead say louis ck yeah right i know now. exactly <laughs> i just start naming i would love if harvey weinstein would host once <laughs> maybe bill cosby right. uh, no yeah those would be kind of the big ones like chris rock mm. um dave Chappelle. It'd still be cool i'm sorry everyone um <laughs> yeah dope yeah. do you have any uh advice for people who want to write like, I guess, based on your now sketch writing experience from SNL, do you have any insight for people who just write sketch in general? Things you learned along the way that might have been come yeah. to light through the show? <clears throat> I would say be as original as possible. I think especially nowadays, so many people are funny. Mm-hmm. Um, and so many people, and I, I think that, like, there's a thing where it's like, and you've seen this at, like, open mics and stuff, where it's like, some people are like naturally funny with their friends and stuff, but cannot figure out how to bottle it up in a way that just like works for on stage, you know? Mm. But now I feel like there's so much access to like how to write a joke and how to format a sketch. And there's so many sketches on YouTube that you can watch that a lot of people have like a base level knowledge of how to write sketches. And I think what really is the game changer is just like have a very original ideas. Mm. You know what I mean? Ideas that people could use, but that are like, 
very original to you. Like I would always say, like watch the shows that you want to write on, see what they do, and then how can you have a very specific take on it? You know what right, I mean? Or right. what's the thing that you like writing the best? That's like very original to that. Yeah. Mm, okay. And what do you think? What do you think prepared you the most for what you are doing on SNL? I think just. Do you think it was like classes? Do you think it was stand comedy? Do you th- what would, like? I think it's all. I think just reps. I think when once I started to stand up or comedy in general, because um, I did do a lot of sketch. I took all the US, UCB classes and was on like a pit sketch team and did stuff at like Second City Hollywood. Um, I would say it's just like the reps. I think comedy is so fun, but there is like a work to it that mm-hmm. has to be like done. And again, I don't, I can only speak from my experience, but for me, it was just like becoming obsessed with it. Like when mm-hmm. I started doing mics, I would do like two or three a day and just keep tweaking jokes until I really felt that they were at a place that was really good. And also, also I think just like being okay. And even now with like how long it's going to take and like comedy is not, it's not, I mean, there's like a couple people who like started and then two weeks later, they're like the most famous person in the world. But I would <laughs> say for most of us, it's yeah. a real year long thing, mm-hmm. year long journey. You know what I mean? It's not typically just like, okay, and then here I am and right. I apply for a job. And so I think, but I also think that there's a reward in like the work because then once you get someone, you get in where you trust your voice a lot more right, than if you just right. submitted a packet randomly and are like, oh, okay, I guess I work here now. I think by the time I got to SNL, I was still nervous and very like, but I terrified and, but I think I trust my voice a little bit more and I'm like, okay, I have enough behind me to know that mm. this is something that I can do constantly. This isn't just like a fluke. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. So like trusting your voice, what does that look like? Or like, how did you kind of come into that? How long, wait, how long have you been doing stand up again? In general? I've been doing comedy. With I, improv. Right? With <laughs> improv. Improv. And improv is not my favorite. Yeah. I bless those people's soul, truly. I thought I would love improv. It does not vibe with my brain. Right, right. It's a lot of thinking. And I'm like, I can't. I can't just react. <laughs> people are always like, you're being too jokey. And I'm like, isn't that what we're doing? Yeah. And they're like, no, playing off each other. I'm like, I no, can't. No, it has do that. to be realistic. Yeah. Uh, so, so in total, I would say I've been doing comedy for five years because okay. I started with stand up, then stopped after like a month in L.A. and really dove into like right, sketch right, and right. stuff. And then when I got to New York in 2018, but 2019 is really when I started like stand up. Yeah. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Gotcha. So how long do you feel like you how long do you feel like it took you to come into your voice? Or do you think you were kind of in touch with that? I'm still learning it. Okay. This year I have discovered I am still so, so green. <laughs> like, <Yeah>. <laughs> every time I think like, okay, but I got here, I realize like, oh no, mm. you're still, there's still so much to learn and I'm still so green. So I'm still learning my voice. I think I, I guess more so I trust that like, I have a skill that I can reproduce. Right, if that makes right, any sense. Right, yeah. And every time you write a new joke or a new bit, you're still like, I don't know, man. <laughs> this is like <laughs> the last good one I've ever done. Yeah. But I think I'm I'm more confident now in being like, all right, this is a thing that you do as like a job and you'll get there and you'll keep figuring it out. Mm. But yeah, it is just like a I hope to keep I'm better now than I was like a year ago than I thought, you know, Mm. there's like every time you do it, you just get better and more comfortable at it. Right. So I'm still learning it. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. I think like voice is one of those things where I'm just like, it's so nebulous. Yeah. Tough. But like when I see people who have their voice figured out, I'm like, Oh yeah, that you clearly have it unlocked. Yes, I'm, I'm all, it always makes me doubt myself. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, do I even know what I'm what I'm, what I'm about? Like, exactly. What is going on? It's so hard. Yeah. It's so hard. So yeah. Uh, do you have any other? Sh- if like hypothetically, if Hi. you don't get an SNL for yes. next season, what show would you work on if you could? Um. Oh, that's a great. Or what question. kind of project would you be interested in? I don't know. I would love to do something maybe like a sitcom. Mm. Yeah, like a scripted thing. Um, or just more sketch. I don't know. The sky's the limit. I really want to also just keep focusing on my stand up too. Yeah. I think the more I do rooms and stuff, the more that stand up becomes a bigger priority too. Mm. So that's cool. Yeah. We'll that's see. great. Connor, do you have any final SNL questions? No, no, I'm good. <laughs> He's good. Okay. I just want the mic. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Awesome. Well, Vanessa, this has been fucking amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. And thank you for uh, doing the secret p- episode right after this where you spill all the tea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Done deal. Done deal. <laughs> no. Great. But yeah, thanks for coming on. Uh, yeah. Where can people find you other than the credits of Saturday Night Live? <laughs> Love that. That's fun. Um, you can find me 
at Instagram and Twitter at very Vanessa with two N's. Two N's. I also think I changed my Instagram handle since the last time, which I told you I was going to do. So nice. look at me. Progress. <laughs> Progress. It's good. I remember because I tried to look you up a while back. And it's I, a struggle. You, you Nobody gone. can. Nobody yeah. can. <laughs> awesome, guys. Well, go uh, check her, follow her on Instagram. Go to our shows. Um, yeah. Watch SNL. You know, yeah. <laughs> uh, take that writer's class or something. Yes, uh, do yeah. it. Awesome. Well, thanks again for having they're coming on. Yeah. You are, thank you again for having me. This I'm in the tiny my chair. Podcast. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, that's a that's it for this week's episode. Uh please subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're watching that here. Um, you know, I love you all, and I'll talk to you all next week. Bye.